Welcome back to 30, Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. Uh, today we're going to continue our study of uh, unbound states, uh, uh, that is, uh, states of uh, sort of free particles that correspond to free particles instead of those that are bound. And we will take up the topic today of the potential barrier. Um, what do I mean by potential barrier? Uh, this, uh, what I've drawn over here is sort of a schematic of a, um, a potential, the kind of potential barrier I'm talking about. You have, uh, very similar to what we had last time, sort of a step, a step up in the potential um, at a particular value of x. Again, this is one dimensional. Um, uh, we'll just call that x equals zero. It goes up to some value u sub, u sub zero, and then it comes back down to zero at x equals l. So we can divide our our region, our uh, our uh, potential into three regions. One um, region one is at x less than zero, and that corresponds to when the potential is zero. Region two is is uh, where the barrier is, so that's where the potential is u u zero. And region three is where it goes back to zero again. The potential goes back to zero again um, when x is greater than l. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the general solutions to this uh, problem are similar to uh, what we saw for the step potential, okay? So in particular, we have, in region one, we have um, oscillatory solutions. Uh, so psi one is equal to uh, some uh, amplitude coefficient times e to the i k one x plus some other amplitude coefficient b times e to the minus i k1 x, okay? And k1, which is equal to k3, uh, which is the oscillatory solution in region three, um, is equal to the square root of two m times the energy, two m e divided by h bar, okay? m is the mass of, a partic of the particle. In the, uh, in the, in the barrier region, okay, when, between, when x is between zero and l, we have the solution psi 2 is equal to a, an, another amplitude coefficient times e to the i k 2 x plus d e to the minus i k 2 x and k 2 is equal to 2 m e um, uh, 2 m e minus uh, u naught divided by h bar square root of uh, 2 m e minus u naught divided by h bar okay and um, and then finally in region 3 uh, we have uh, psi 3 is equal to f, another amplitude coefficient, times e to the i, k3 times x, and k3, k1 is equal to k3, so, uh, because, because u naught is zero there, I mean, because u is zero there. So, um, we don't have a, f a sixth coefficient because there's nothing on the right-hand side, there's nothing to the right of l, there's nothing uh, in, in the region x greater than l, which can reflect, um, which can reflect the wave function, and so there's no, um, uh, and so we don't have a left moving wave in that region. We only have a right moving wave, and if you remember from the last uh, lecture, uh, when you have a positive i k x, that means that we're we have we're ha we're dealing with right moving solutions. Okay, so I just wanted to point out. But we'll see this later on. When when the potential energy is actually when the energy the total energy is actually less than u naught. Okay, so when you have a particle whose energy uh, should be should uh, correspond to classical reflection at the uh, step up, then uh, then this uh, then uh, k two here will be imaginary because e minus u naught will then be uh, will then be less than one and so it will then be negative. And so we can rewrite this as we just factor out a negative sign so that this now becomes positive. U naught minus E is positive. So this now becomes positive and then we have to take the square root of one so we bring the I outside. And we can call, we can call alpha, uh, we can equate with uh, square root of two M U naught minus E uh, over H bar, okay? So um, the coefficient A is given by the intensity of the incoming being like it was in the step potential. And the other coefficients b, c, d, and f are given by continuity of psi and psi prime at x equals zero and x equals l. And so we have four equations and four nones, and so everything's okay. Everything should work out.